Hello guys and welcome to Freebird Screw and uh, this is the sixth week of uh, financial data analytics course and in this video I will tell you about the deep learning for finance. Okay, so the deep learning is actually a subset of machine learning that uses the neural networks to solve the complex problems. Okay, so first question, what is the like complex problems in the finance domain? Okay, so the complex problem in the finance domain are predicting or forecasting the stock prices credit risk assessment, fraud detection. Because these kind of problems have a huge amount of data that has to be analyzed completely, find the patterns, find the anomalies and, and find everything that is uh, usable for that kind of a problem. Okay, but with the help of machine learning, we can't like uh, uh, use the full potential of that uh, huge amount of data that is about uh, 1 TB or 2 TB amount of data as well. Because machine learning algorithms can go on an impasse at a, at, a, like, uh, at a very certain level. From above that, they can't be able to find patterns or like uh, use their machine learning algorithm power. That's where we use the deep learning. Okay, so deep learning algorithms have the neural networks. With the help of neural networks, it can remember the information as well. It can uh, find the patterns in the complex data as well. It can work on the sequential data like our time series data with the help of a timed feature as well. It works on the image data as well. That's where machine learning did not work. Okay, so that's why we use the deep learning over machine learning because we are having this kind of problems of the large data sets or time series data or image data or the scalability okay all these kind of issues can be solved by the deep learning okay so let me just give you a look at the neural network okay so this is how a neural network actually looks okay and this is the human brain neuron because New neural network is the replica of the human brain neuron. Okay, so it has the same features as the human brain neuron. It has the input layers, it has the hidden layers, it has the activation function, it has the output layer as well. Okay, so when we pass all these information, it processes with the help of uh, its hidden layers and its activation function and give us the output as well. Okay, so because deep learning has these neural networks as their basic building components they can be used as a human brain analyzer in the artificial intelligence domain okay so let me just give you an example here so imagine we are like trying to predict the price movement of the stock with the help of these are the features that we already have okay so the movement of the stock should be go up or down one means up zero means down so here i build like a very small or very like basic kind of a neural network here and with the help of our keras and tensorflow libraries keras and tensorflow li libraries are mainly used to build the neural networks okay so if you ever want to learn the deep learning make sure you learn about the tensorflow and keras libraries okay so here i follow the same step as we do in the our past videos build this dummy data and pass it on it build a data frame build the x and y and then test frame split okay and here i just uh, build a new variable that is called early stopping so early stopping i used so so that my neural network will not go to the overfitting part okay so if the validation loss is stopped and not increasing or decreasing then it will stop the training of the neural network because else it will keep on going training it will overfit as well na right okay so that's where our neural network stru structure came in it has the sequential neural network that means it able to understand the sequential data and it has the dense layer and dropout layer and activation functions as well okay so if you don't know about any of these things that what is sequential layer what is dropout what is activation functions okay so don't worry in the next month, I am starting a course on the deep learning as well, in which I explain about all these concepts. Okay, so for right now, you just need to understand the use cases of deep learning in the finance domain. Okay, so let's go to the next part. Okay, so here comes the recurrent neural networks. 
So recurrent neural networks are actually designed for the sequential data. That is time series data that increases in the or decreases in, in the sequential manner. Okay, because in the time series data or in the stock, stock market data, it increases in a sequence, it decreases in a sequence. So that sequential pattern need to be understand. And that is not un understandable quietly well by the machine learning algorithms. That's why we need to use the neural networks here. And recurrent neural networks are best for the time series an analysis. Okay, because it have the loop that allows information to stay. Okay, and if a algorithm that makes information to stay and enable to capture patterns over the time, it is best, right? Because if if uh, your machine learning model can actually draw out the pattern line or draw out the uh, pattern for you, then you can easily uh, make the uh, insights or the predictions as well. Okay, so simply here, I just build a kind of a dummy data here with the number of samples and number of features with the time steps of 10. This time step feature actually I give so that it can provide pattern in the data over 10 steps. Okay, so, so let's just see how our RNN model will work on this 10 step data. Okay, I just give him a ReLU function here and uh, then build a sequential model here and then compile it with the mean squared error. Okay, because it is a regression problem, not a a classical problem that's why we use the mean squared error as a loss and a metric function here okay and when we fit it okay when we fit it you see the mean squared error got decreases okay decreases from the 0 0.9 to 0 0.1 so that means our model is slightly able to understand the sequential pattern in the data so that's where it works well right okay so what about our neural network has some kind of drawbacks as well Right, because every algorithm has some kind of drawbacks. So recurrent neural network has a drawback that is called vanishing gradient problem. Okay, so I will discuss about the vanishing gradient problem in our deep learning course. Okay, so don't worry about that. So what if there is a the vanishing gradient problem? So we have a, another algorithm that is much better than the recurrent neural network that is called long short term memory networks. Okay, so long short term memory network it addresses the vanishing gradient problem as well and work effectively for the longer sequences. Okay, because for the longer sequences of the data, RNN shows the vanishing gradient problem, but LSTM work well. Okay, it can like uh, sustain or remember the information over a long period of time, making them suitable for the financial forecasting. Okay, so that's where you use the LSTM as well. So we have the like same kind of uh, features here. And if we apply the LSTM as well, see how it goes well. It just drops the error from the 0 0.2 to 0 0.09. Okay. It just drops the error more than RNN above because RNN drops it to 0 0.1. It drops it to 0 0.09. Okay. So that shows that it works a better than the RNN here. Okay. I know it is a kind of a dummy data or a randomly generated data only. But still, but still it works in that way that it should understand the longer sequences as compared to the RNN. Okay. So let me just uh, give, give you a kind of a short project. Okay. Short project on the dummy data with the help of LSTM neural networks. Okay. So like steps that we want to follow. Okay. So, and the, these are the were like data we have. We give that time step of 30 number of features is equal to one. And this is how we build our model here. And this is the approaches we get. And this is the predictions. This is our graph. Okay. When it do all the kind of approaches we have. Okay. So approaches are just the iterations. That iterations over the data as well to learn the patterns. Okay. So it done 10 approaches. And after that, this is the result. Okay. So these blue lines are your actual data. And uh, orange lines are your the predicted data you see it tries to match with the uh, actual data patterns here okay it will not like uh, go the uh, accent of the actual data but it tries to match the patterns here okay you see that it tries to match the pattern very well so if some stock goes up it also goes up if some stock goes down it also goes down okay so that means it is able to understand the pattern here so that's how you can like uh, 
build your time series kind of forecasting models with the help of deep learning neural networks so in our next video i will tell you about like how to build a very like long lasting project with the financial data it is the capstone project of our financial data analytics course and after that this course will be completed and uh, in the next week i am starting a machine learning course and in the machine learning course i, I will be uh, teaching about every machine learning algorithm from the scratch with the math with the python code as well. so just be be there with it and learn with freebird's crew